Hey guys, welcome back. This is a magazine that I bought probably a year ago or better, or right at a year ago maybe. I bought it up in um, Franklin, North Carolina at a uh, antique mall and I was just thumbing through it the other day and noticed a lot of cool stuff, uh, model related cool stuff. This is a 1962 edition of Hot Rod Magazine. Um, has the National Drags included, which is one of the portions I want to show you. Um, so many uh, models, um, are, <laughs> you'll see, it's just, this thing is, is just the coolest ever. And I just noticed something else on the cover. Um, is that that turbocharged Pontiac or Buick or something like that? I don't know. I don't know, uh, I didn't even see that in there, but I know there was a, I don't know, no, that's not turbocharged, that's, that's not, that's a, uh, that's actually a belt-driven supercharger, wow. They're, they had a lot of cool stuff back in the 60s, as far as, uh, performance and drag racing goes, but anyway, let's, let's get in here, and, uh, I've got several pages marked, and I'll just flip through there really quick, there's your, uh, 63 Chevy 2, um, 63 Chevy, what is that, Impala or something like that. All right, so the first thing here, oh, by the way, there's an old RC car of, that was me driving it. That was a T-Max back in first gen T-Max when they had the uh, auto start button and all that stuff. But anyway, it's not what we're here for. The monogram bit the the big T. Um, <laughs> this is uh, the cool part is the price. So this is that eighth. I think it's eighth scale. Uh, one and a half inch scale. What the heck does that mean? But I think it's like eighth or it's a big. Maybe it's a sixteenth. I don't know what what scale it is. It doesn't really say. It says one and a half inch scale um, the kit was PA 78 and it was ten dollars and ninety eight cents um, you can still find this on eBay and if I can remember I'll flash some pictures of what these things cost now um, amazing what uh, the price go is going for these things now the uh, this original one I know they repopped it but the original kit from the six from 62 oh yes what a couple hundred dollars maybe closer to three hundred dollars but that is really cool it says Daryl Starbird whoever Daryl Starbird I didn't look to see who he was it says top automotive customizer and restyler Daryl Starbird says sharp and smooth beautiful styling an ingenious design and construction plus remarkable authenticity and realism so yeah if you can uh, get your hands on one of these for less than a couple hundred dollars you have done well but just look how prices have gone completely out of control but that is for a classic monogram kit not just for uh, you know if they were to repop this you could probably get it for less than fifty dollars but this is very cool. I didn't read the uh, all the uh, ad had to say about it, but it said it did have 203 parts. 97 of the parts are in gleaming chrome plate. No painting re required. But yeah, very, very cool. Oh, another, another uh, shot of the T-Max. Ripping it around our little homemade track. That was uh, at my dad's house. He had made us a made us an RC track. I don't think I was living at home at that time. I wasn't. Um, but anyway, all right. So this not necessarily model related, except the old style um, drag tires. And I know they they they've come out with a lot of the older kits, which I'm going to get to some of those in a little bit. Um, but they would have had that tire that looked like a truck tire that was bald. 
but um, I always wondered why did they put that tread design on the side of the old tires? Why didn't they just leave it smooth? I, I, I really have always wondered that because that's what it made it look like to me was just an old bald truck tire. But it wasn't. That's a race master. That was probably so hard. That's why they, they ignited into smoke whenever those guys would hit them because they would not hook up because they had such a stiff sidewall. Tire technology came a long way. But um, I'm not sure, do some of the uh, nostalgia type dragster cars, do they have that type of tire in the kits? Because I don't have very many. I do have one sitting here. And I guess I could open it up in a minute, but we'll see. All right, had nothing to do with models there, uh, like directly. All right, here's another picture of me. Boy, I was young. Young guy there ripping it again look at the left looks like the left front's off the ground um there's another t-max there in front of me and uh yeah good times all right here is an article that i noticed um that i just completely blew by this is from model car builders corner amt and apparently buddy let's see what's his name i can't read his writing it's like Buddy uh, Henderson. I can't tell what the heck the guy's name is. Anyways, the cat. The cat from AMT wrote an article here. And uh, he said uh, there was something interesting. I did read this one. And it was about girls and modeling. Is it this article? Let's see. I think it was. When you dig that AMT, that AMT power, what is this? AM? Many, I'm just going to read a little bit of this article. Many of you who, who saw our great uh, authentic model turnpike in action. Model turnpike. Hmm. Uh, in action at the uh, World's Fair in Seattle are giving the model stores a fit trying to keep up with the demand. What the heck is a model turnpike? Is it this thing? I don't know. So if by chance you didn't see in Seattle, get right down to your friendly AMT dealer and take a look. Man, you'll flip when you dig that AMT power steering. And while you're there, you had better stock on those stock up on those 1962 kits. Isn't that cool? Wouldn't it be nice to have a time machine because I would stock up on some 1962 kits and take them to 2022 and I'd be set. They're going fast and when they're gone, they're really, really gone. Man, that's what it says. Oh, here it is. Fellas, watch out for the girls. Watch out. This is funny because my Ruthie um, and my wife and Heather Hanscom, it's like... Are, guys, are we being taken over here? Fellas, watch out. The girls are getting into the act. At a recent model car contest at Stewart's Hobby in Bakersfield, California, there were five, count them, five girl type entries. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's really funny, you know. Five, you know, Bakersfield, Southern California. Pretty, pretty well populated place even back then. There were five. Boy, they wrote an article about this. Uh, so let's hear from some of you swinging chicks. Uh, you may be able to start a new fad in customizing. That is really cool. Um, Detroit's 63 cars are way out this year, and eventually, or evidently, some of you can't wait to customize them. I'm already getting letters asking about our 63 custom kits. Well, I can tell you this. Uncle George Barris came up with some of the wildest custom ideas yet. The 63 kit kits will be out of this world. The auto designers must have had AMT in mind when they did their styling on the 63 cars. <laughs> Special news. Do, 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 do. Special news. AMT's all new colorful model car handbook is now on the stands. And you'll be missing the greatest in print if you don't hustle out to your local hobby store and kit and uh, latch on to a copy. Where am I at? Features galore, uh, features galore. Dang, I lost again. From cover to cover, like 10 best models, giant model car pictorial, 22 page how-to section, AMT lacquer spraying tricks, 
autographed covers by cat by the cat which is apparently this guy but this is weird because maybe not the cat because it's kind of weird for the cat to be calling his own self the cat but anyway autographed covers by the cat barris plus the big story behind the technical development of amt's authentic model turnpike i gotta find out what the heck a model turnpike is i don't have any idea um it's the wildest yet. Get your copy today. They're going fast. We had a real swinging time at the World's Fair, and I want to thank you all who uh, who were there for stopping by the AMT display to chat about model cars. I hope to see more of you in my future trips around the country. Sincerely, Bud looks like Henderson. I don't know if it is or not, but anyway, the cat from AMT. Very cool little article there. Takes you back in time. And uh, yeah, very neat. All right, moving on. What's the next? Oh, here's a cool picture. This is my dad. So, this is my dad's truck he had restored. It was a 76, I believe, uh, Ford pickup. Um, 460 C6 transmission. It was a king cab or super cab truck. And he is at a drag strip. No, it's not a drag truck, but they had a big race. It paid, I think, $10,000 or something, and everybody entered everything. So they entered, uh, it's bracket racing, obviously, but they entered, everyone entered their personal car. Everything was entered in this sucker because everybody wanted the 10,000, but this is back in the late nineties. And, uh, yep, there he is. That was a cool truck. It was really nice. My dad was a painter, body man, painter and all. He got that truck and restored it. All right, back in, back to it. Here is another cool model. This is about the Renwall. Um, visible V8. By Renwell. There's the visible V8, and here is the visible airplane engine. Again, these. If you find these that aren't built, I mean, if you find one that is built, way crazy money. Um, yeah. So the quarter scale, uh, the visible V8 quarter size scale uh, model of the famous internal combustion engine that does everything but burn oil. Watch the valves open and close, the pistons moving in. Perfect time in the spark plugs firing. It's a complete education in engines. Manual and easy to follow instructions. Book included. $10.95 for that one. And for the replica of the Pratt & Whitney Wasp. Trans transparent housing permits. A clear view of nine radial, radially, radially mounted cylinders, valves, rocker arms, connecting rods, cams, and gears. As they synchronize with the electric firing of the spark plugs. Compare pitch. Or variable pitch propeller, quarter scale size, complete with motor stand and manual, $14.95. My dad told me about, when he was a kid, there was an engine. It was a V8 engine or whatever. And he said that it would, um, it was clear. And you see all the parts moving. And I think this is the one he was talking about. My dad is a child, of, was a child of the 60s. My dad was born in 46. So he was in his teen years here. And, uh. Was he? 46? 56, that's 10. 66 would have been... Yeah, oh, definitely. So he was in his teen years um, and uh, told me about a clear engine, but I didn't know it was a Renwall. And the only reason I know what a Renwall is because I have those Renwall uh, kits. Uh, I have like a bunch of them now. Renwall Corvette 54. I uh, got some other Cadillac and some other little kits that I purchased at the same antique mall. Every darn one of them. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. If you want one of these, send uh, send uh, send your money to Renwell right there. Get it to you just as quickly as we get them produced. But yeah, that is really cool. Um, if I can remember, I'll flash a couple of pictures of the Renwell V8 um, eBay, pick, eBay and uh, show you just how much those darn things cost. Very expensive now. So, turning on, turning on, <coughs> excuse me, here is a picture. My dad bought this 64, a Cyclone, Mercury Cyclone Comet. It's not a Caliente, it was a Cyclone Comet. Um, he bought this car, and it was crashed on the left front. You can't see it here, but it had uh, damage on the left front. He was, uh, like I told you, a body and fender man. Uh, he repaired all of that. Um, repaired all the damage, 
but unfortunately due to finances could not ever afford to uh, put the car back together you know restore it it was just set in primer forever um, finally it ended up outside it's still at his house um, which I own but it's at his house and um, it, it's basically rotted away which was a real shame because this was a very uh, it was a I wouldn't say very rare but it was a not common to find one of these uh, 64 Cyclone Comets. It was a K. There was a K in the... My dad all, he always made sure to say about the K. But there was a K in the serial number which represented the not 271 horse 289. It had a 210 horse 289. He always thought that it had a 271 until eventually he found out that it didn't come with the 271. It came with the 210. But anyway, four barrel car... Um, eight inch um rear end not a nine inch but anyway it was a little performance car in its day but unfortunately it's pretty well pretty well gone all right so grand prix of drag racing now these pictures are very cool and if any of you guys were our um drag racer um modelers oh boy one that comes to mind is um model cars with glenn glenn always has it looks like he's made everything into a drag car customized it into a drag car and uh i see things like this um and that 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 actually reminded me of glenn i don't even know if glenn's got one like this but it just looks like something that he would custom make um take a car and uh move the the rear wheels where the front you know your doors were and and or, or the body back and just make it some really really bizarre looking altered wheelbase thing but um there it is okay so uh you see this car right here Let's see if i can't zoom in on that might be better if i just pick up the magazine so here is a little um fiat dragster it says uh what does it say watts puffer or something like that this says watts puffer 2 but the watts puffer 1 is a uh, actually a model kit that you can buy and it's the one that comes in the metal tin this one right here look at that a double a dragster 285 um double a dragster 285 i don't think this is <coughs> because this isn't number this is number two in the book but the uh, model kit is um, not number two. Um, so I think this was an earlier version of that drag car. Or maybe it is that one and they just, it's a little different. The body is a little different because this one actually has the same body style. And you can see that the one on the left has more of a chop top and the one on the right doesn't. Not that say that's, that's not the same car, but it is the same type of body, little Fiat. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, and here is one that is a very well-known uh, drag car made into a model kit. I don't have it, but the stone I do have. I do have the the Ravel 41 Willie Street Demon version, but the stone wooden uh, stone uh, woods and cook um, Willis. I don't have that model kit. I, had, I have the second release of it when it was the uh, Street Demons. But there it is. Check it out, man, in real life. And then if you look over here on the, on the, it says Class Winners. Class Winners. Modified. Let's see, where's he at? Supercharged Coupes and Sedans. GS173. That's him. You see it on the, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but he's on the, right behind the driver's head. GS173 Stone Woods Cook, Doug Cook, Los Angeles, California. He ran a 1059 at 136.77 miles an hour. Pretty darn cool, right? I guess this is a, I don't know. I don't know if that's first, second, and third or what, but anyway. Definitely a very cool book here because it has so much, um, so much Na uh, NASCAR so much drag racing history just from this one this was Indianapolis Indiana is where this was November says 1962 the top eliminator let's see if I see any 
any uh, eliminator results. Well, I don't know what the difference is, but anyway, who is this? Let's see if I see anybody. Jack Chrisman, uh, Tennessee Bow Weevil, Waltz Puffer. Okay, well, that's that little darn uh, little car I got there in the tin, Waltz Puffer, or Waltz Puffers. That was a junior eliminator, little eliminator, Peter Shandy, Shandiger. Street Eliminator, Moody Jones, Moody Dash Jones, and Stock Eliminator, Hayden Prophet. Anyway, cool stuff there. The most awesome looking uh, pictures and uh, drag racing history that was made. Here's one that a lot of guys would recognize, at least the name. Um, Ram Chargers over there, and that's something. What's, what's that, a Chevy over there about it? Looks like he's about to eat his lunch. It's almost toting the front tires, looks like, I think. Maybe they're not even moving. Maybe it's just a stance, but also it's like the Chevy is really launching hard, but it's probably just sitting still. Yeah, cool stuff. Cool stuff. Love it, love it, love it. There was one picture I saw that looked like, they were, yeah, here it is. It's like they're driving, darn. Looks like they're driving the Lincolns and stuff. I don't know, big cars, big four doors. Going at it. Some more wheelies up there at the top. 55. Getting with it. Really neat. Look at this one. That looks like a Metropolitan that's a very altered wheelbase Metropolitan. Too cool. Too cool. Okay. And a few more of them. I don't want to skip any. You guys might want to might see something that you say, "Oh man, that's the model I built." But anyway, all right. Well, no, you know what? Here's Walt's puffer. He had he had not just a uh, Fiat. He had something else. Oh well. Continuing on, I have it marked right here. We'll just flip fast forward. Okay, this was actually the one that I was going to um, compare to the to the model kit is this, but I didn't even realize that the Waltz Puffer car was, was in there. But yeah, so that is a, a pretty good representation of this car, although it's it's not the same car. Same type of, list, I mean, I don't even, it may even have the same rear wheels, same scoop and everything. Miss DeSoto. I mean, maybe this is the same same outfit that built this car i'm not sure about it but that one looks awfully similar to that one nevertheless it's not and it's got those truck tires that are worn slap out oh i was going to say let's see if the, let's see if the tires what what the tires look like in this thing so they do look they do uh, look pretty similar but they don't have that they don't have the uh, the tread pattern, that design that I was like, why did they put that there? So see, the, if I was the designer of the tires, they would look like this. But no, they wanted them to look like, like some truck tires that were, were bald. So anyway, that's their business. I just like looking at the pictures. All right. Continuing on to the next section here. Ran out of pictures, so just using empty envelopes. Bonneville salt flats this is cool um model related too and also i got a bag of bonneville salt flat salt which makes it even more cool because just think about this guys see that do you see that vast openness of salt just you know this may be this salt I don't know if salt disappears or anything like it's there forever or what like dirt but you know it's very possible that this 1962 salt is the same salt i got in this bag right here that billy bear sent me isn't that cool i have got bonneville in my hands right here man that is something else it's bonneville salt but there's a couple of names here that probably will jump out at you the uh Jet Unlimited. See, Art Arfons from where in Ohio? Um, geez, I forgot where in Ohio he was from. But anyway, big town. Uh, Akron. I think it was Akron. 
Art Arfons. Um, Art Arfons also got into tractor pulling and he run the green, everything was the green monster. But um, yeah, he uh, he had, I saw him in person before. It was so cool. I was a little kid and he was still running a single engine um, uh, turbine. But anyway, Art Arfon, 1962 um, Jet Unlimited. Apparently he's the only guy that ran Jet Unlimited. Uh, he ran 330 miles an hour in 1962. But then here is Mickey Thompson. That's another guy, right? Um, 354 miles an hour in 1960. I don't, I don't follow the, the stats here at all. But anyway, very cool. I'm glad I've got. Thank you, Billy. I, it's so cool to have, have a piece. You know, literally some, some history and, and to see this picture and think that you know that, that some of the salt in this picture could possibly be in this bag. I think that's cool. Some people think that's stupid, but that's okay. Hey, here I am. I used to fly, fly RC airplanes, and that's me. Look how happy I was. I was so happy. I had just got, this was a Kyosho Kamado, just a basic trainer plane. I had a bunch of them, man. I had a bunch of planes. But anyway, I just finished that one, and I was ready to go fly it. That was a good plane. Flew great. Um, What am I looking for here? Oh, here it is. You know that Moon Dragster that they released not too long ago? There she is. I mean, I know it's a, uh, well, there's the actual picture of it in a book, 1962 catalog. But that's pretty darn cool right there. There she is. Got that front mounted blower. And uh, yeah, and the truck tires, bald truck tires on the back. Spoked bicycle tires on the front. Gotta feel safe running like 200 miles an hour of that. Words out. The talk of the pits is about this year's greatest racing spectacle, the 62 Moon Catalog. Send a dollar now. Refundable with purchase. Isn't that cool? I know I say that a lot, but anyway, these books are like amazing that you can literally hold something that's that old. Uh oh, about to lose Jeff Lawless. My Jeff Lawless, bearded guy Jeff Lawless is my page marker there. Here is one, not necessarily model related, but I thought it was a cool article. Stainless steel tubular style custom grills for the 55 to 62 Chevy, the 59 to 61 Pontiac, 60 to 61 Corvair, a 58 T-Bird, 61 Falcon, or the 49 through the 62 Ford. Regular $39.95, but on sale now from J.C. Whitney for $16.95. I, the reason I thought that this was a neat article is because, you know, you get a lot um, of customized... Back in the 60s, model kits had a lot of customizing parts. And, you know, some of them would have had grills like this. Custom grills that you could have used to upgrade your uh, your model kit. And, uh, yeah, man, isn't that cool? Again, the prices are what really makes me take a step back and say, where, what happened? Why? Why was the why? Why were these grills um, sixteen ninety five then? But now, if you were to get a custom tubular stainless steel grill, it would probably be three hundred and fifty dollars. It's because of inflation, Matthew. What is inflation? You know, I I, I don't. I honestly, I'm asking. These are like kind of like rhetorical. I really don't want an answer for these questions because I don't get it. You still won't make me get it because it's like, why is a dollar? Anyway, I'm just going to get off that subject. Anyway, cool stuff. Cool stuff here. I think I got one more. And uh, like I say, bearded guy Jeff Lawless was marking my page. Thanks, Jeff. What was it about? Let me find. There was an article. Oh, oh, here it is. Oh, let me grab it. Where did I put the darn thing? I have a model kit that I was going to show at the same time of this and I don't see it now I have stashed it in my stash and I have stashed it for myself huh where in the heck did it go oh well okay um, it was a pyro kit I thought I had all my pyro kits in the same spot but apparently not all right anyway I had that pyro kit the other day 48 48 uh oh no 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 false alarm thought I saw it I don't know where I put the darn thing Huh. Well, I think I still have it. All right, back to it. Sorry. Total sidetrack. 48 uh, Pyro 48 Lincoln. 
and I got to looking and I was like, wow, that's pretty darn cool. There's one right there for sale. 48 Continental, new tires and brakes, primed, ready for paint, running gear good, 53 Merc or, or, or original V12 engine, $850 or best offer. Douglasville, Georgia. Man, too cool. Too cool. Well, that was just a quick rundown. There's the... Uh, the thir it says 36, but that's that 37, you know, panel that you can... Uh, Kim, Kim's Custom Garage just made an insane asylum truck out of this thing. Creepy, man. But anyway, that's what that is. They wanted a... Uh, they said, here's a 36 Ford V8 panel truck. Mint condition, everything original. 10,790 actual miles of drip. Uh, drive anywhere would make an excellent service truck. Attract real attention. Make an offer. Man. That's amazing. But anyway, all right. 1962, November of 1962. Hot Rod Magazine. Hope you enjoyed this. I did. I think that this is a real cool way to uh, see where our hobby came from um, and actually see model related articles in Hot Rod Magazine. Guys, thanks for watching this video. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscription button. I really appreciate it. Like this video if you did enjoy watching it. And check out everything else that I always mention. Hobby Nut Models. My spring store. Go grab yourself a t-shirt. Thank you to those of you who have. Or other things that I have. Patreon guys, thank you so much for your support. And the Facebook group. Go join Model Car Videos Facebook group. We're having a great time over there. And uh, we're done. So we'll see you guys on the next one. I'm going to look at some more books. Take care. Bye.